So you come home from school and open your calendar. You have two readings, three essays, and one group project all due tomorrow. Now, of course, you don't start your work right away. You head to your couch, you take a little break, but very quickly that 15 minute break turns into a 30 minute break, which turns into an hour long break. And next thing you know, it's 10 p.m. and you still haven't started your work. Why is it so hard to start your work? And how can you be more productive? And before we jump into the video, if you're a high school student or know a high school student that needs help improving their grades and applying to college, check out Next Admit. The link is in my description. We do college essay reviews, we hop on consultation calls with students, and we're also soon launching something called the High School Roadmap. You can learn more about it and find the link to the waitlist in my description below. So am I some productivity guru that's grinding 24-7? Of course not. But I did grind throughout all four years of high school, then all four years of college, and I did learn a few things along the way. Chances are if you're struggling to start your work, you're inflating reality. And the reason this is happening is because you're stockpiling your work. So when you get an assignment, you just put it in your calendar and that's that. But I recommend that when you get an assignment, try to figure out how long it actually is and even predict how long you think it'll take you to complete it. If you just take assignments and throw them onto your to-do list without actually looking at them, you're just gonna feel overwhelmed. In your head, all you're gonna be thinking is, oh my god, I have these five assignments that I haven't even started, I don't know where to begin, what to do for them, etc. But if you take some time to at least look at your assignments and have some grasp on reality, you'll feel way less overwhelmed when it's time to start your work. At the end of the day, this is how much work you have to do, and this is what it feels like inside your head. And by at least taking the time to read through your assignments and predict how long they'll take you, this is what it'll start to feel like. All right, once you've stopped inflating reality and grounded your expectations, I think the next step is to gain some sense of control. Now this might not be feasible all the time, but as soon as you get an assignment, try to answer just the first question right then and there. If it's an essay, maybe try to bullet some ideas or even write your first sentence. The reason this at least worked for me is because once I started my work in school, as soon as I got home, I felt way less overwhelmed about starting. I didn't need to muster up that activation energy to get the ball rolling. And by the time I got home, instead of feeling that dread of having to start a homework assignment, I just had to keep the momentum going. And that leads into my next point. Try to create an after school routine. And if you can, just start your work as soon as you get home. Now, of course you can take a break, but I recommend using a timer. Take a break for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, even 45 minutes. Make sure you have a defined cutoff point for when you stop relaxing and start working. Now chances are, even when it's time to start working, maybe you still feel unmotivated. Maybe starting your work in school wasn't enough to make it easier to start your work once you got home. And if that's the case, I recommend focusing on the minimum viable step. When you know you have to start your work, you probably feel overwhelmed. Just think, okay, I have to go and sit at my desk. And that's it. Don't think about all the other things you have to do. Don't think about all the other steps in the process. Just do the simplest and easiest thing you possibly can in that moment to get started. And maybe it's not even going to your desk. Maybe it's just standing up but do whatever you have to do to even make a tiny amount of progress. Okay, now all of this is well and good, but let's assume you have a bunch of tasks. What order should you tackle them in? All right, so something I did back in school and something I do even to this day is practice something called fixed before flexible. Okay, so bear with me. Some tasks are fixed, meaning that they'll usually take some concrete defined amount of time. For example, every day I try to read for 30 minutes. I try to work out for one hour. I might do something else for 45 minutes. These tasks take up a fixed amount of time. Now flexible tasks, on the other hand, might vary. Writing an essay might take 30 minutes. It might take two hours. Who really knows? So tasks that don't take up a defined amount of time are flexible tasks. And now before I put this whole idea together, I want to explain a third concept, Parkinson's Law. This informal law states, work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. So here's the way fixed before flexible works. You have all of this time in the day. If you do your flexible tasks first, because you haven't created bounds or figured out when you're gonna do your fixed tasks, these flexible tasks, according to Parkinson's law, are just going to expand and take up all your time. And this way, you'll probably have way less time for your fixed tasks or might not be able to complete them whatsoever. 
but if you do your fixed tasks first, you create a constraint for these flexible tasks. According to Parkinson's law, yeah, the tasks might take up the rest of your time, but at least you made time for those fixed tasks and now you get to complete everything. Another tool I loved using to be more productive and get more stuff done was a timer. Just having that pressure of the timer running would really keep me focused on the tasks that I had to complete. Next, another thing that I loved to do throughout high school was to evenly distribute everything. So if I got assigned a 70 page reading that was due in a week, I would simply read 10 pages every day. If I had a math assignment that was 28 questions, I would do four questions every day. Distributing my work evenly just made life a lot easier and prevented me from doing all my work at the last minute. Now, of course, there were times when I didn't do this and I did push things off until the last minute and that was not fun. But regardless, I always did my best to follow this rule. Okay, and I just remembered there was one other random technique that I would sometimes use in school. It's called the countdown method. So if starting your work in school or if finding the minimum viable step doesn't help you start your work, just give yourself a countdown. You can count down from 10, 5, 3, it doesn't matter. But as soon as the countdown is over, you should find that impulse to just jump up and start your work. Might not always work, but it could come in handy. And lastly, it is impossible to be a machine that's just working and getting stuff done 24 seven. So do remember to take breaks. You can take a five minute break every 30 minutes. You could do a 15 minute break every two hours. Find a system or routine that works for you because everyone has different levels of energy.